Facing large quantity, why do we feel overwhelming? I think our uneasy feeling about large quantity has something to do with our working memory limitation. Average people can hold seven items in their working memory. Now we're going to do a small test first on your number sense. I'm going to show you some bars, and you quickly say how many. Pay attention to how you feel differently. Let's begin. Is it different when you saw one, two, or three bars versus six or eight bars? Personally, I immediately know how many bars there are when they're under three, but when there are eight or six bars, I definitely need to pause and do some counting in my head. This is what I think has happened. When there are one, two, or three items, my working memory definitely is able to hold all of them in the right place. Working memory is some place in my brain where raw data are processed and conclusions are drawn. So all the individual bars have to exist there for me to figure out. Oh, I have one, two, or three here. So what should we do if our brain is comfortable with only a few items at a time? We should organize quantity into different buckets. We can certainly assign sounds to these different quantities. How you want to say them is up to you. You can use any sound you like, but let's say we also use one, two, and three. Now reaching three, we're reaching the comfort limit of our brain. If we keep grabbing more and more, we will be lost sooner or later. What should we do? We can bundle them together into a big bundle and name it, say, three. Now we have one, three. We can move it aside and continue. One, two, three. Bundle them and put aside. Keep going. One, two, three. Bundle them. Now we can certainly recognize three bundles in here. Time to bundle them again to make an even bigger bundle, and assign a name, say triplet, and then keep going. Say we end up with this. How will we call it? One triplet, one three, and two. If you have doubt, think about how you would say this number. Our next question is: How are we going to create compact symbols? Representing those quantities, these vocal names seem too cumbersome. If we were to invent abstract symbols to keep track of the quantity of the bundles in each bin, we need to have symbols representing quantity four, zero, an empty bin, one, and two. They don't have to look like this, but they have to be as simple. Since we will bundle up every three objects into a bigger one. And move it into the next bin. In the simple word, it's equivalent to taking the next position once and reset the previous position. Then we keep counting objects and move them around from the smallest size bin. Every time reaching three, we will bundle up and move into the next bin. Consecutive bundling is possible if adding one more object will have rippling effects. This corresponds to ticking once at the higher position. And reset our previous positions. As we keep clearing the bin and continue counting in the physical world, we are resetting symbols and taking the symbols from the lowest positions again. Whenever we bundle up three objects into one and move it into the next bin in the physical world, we are taking the next higher position and reset the lower position in the symbol world. As we constantly counting up and moving bundles through the bins. We are constantly taking and resetting the symbols in the symbol world. Because we never leave more than two items in the bin, we will never encounter a quantity greater than two. That's why we are recycling the basic symbols in the symbol world. For a never increasing quantity, we just append from the left more of the same symbols. This repetitive usage of the same basic symbol solves the symbol unpredictability problem suffered by Roman number system, as we have seen before. If you see the close connections between the symbol and the physical world, then you would appreciate the flexibilities in the number making process, bundle size, and the symbols used. In our Arabic number system, the bundle size is 10. For quantities under 10. We will dedicate individual symbols to represent them. The symbols can take any looks you like, 
and we happen to choose this specific set. As we count up from zero to ten in the physical world, we are progressing through the symbols sequentially in the symbol world. Since we bundle up every ten objects into the next bin and clear the current bin, in the symbol world, we will be taking the next position and reset previous positions. In the binary world used by computers, the bundle size is two. For quantities of zeros and ones, we will have unique symbols for them. Exceeding that, two objects will be bundled into a bigger one and placed aside. So quantities greater than one won't have unique symbols. They are achieved by pushing symbols to the higher position. Consecutive bundling is possible, for example, when we increase from three to four. Accordingly, in our simple world, we will be taking the third position once and reset previous two positions. As we keep counting and bundling more objects, the symbol length keeps increasing, corresponding to our physical world of having more bins to store different bundles. Since we only count up to one before bundling up and moving to the next bin, in the symbol world, that means we'll only have symbols of zeros and ones. How to understand these symbols then? Should we read this one zero 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 as a thousand? Once you understand this general way of making numbers, you should always ask one of what in here. In the binary world, each position represents two times the previous one. Given the specific number representation, it's fairly easy to figure out what quantity it represents. Just combine a few different bundles. In the next section, we're going to talk about the great contributions made by positional number system in developing our number sense. Specifically, we're going to see why Arabic numerals seem more tight and neat as compared to Romans. Is it just because we're used to one but not the other, or there are some fundamental differences between the two in building our number sense? We're going to find that out in the next section.